And welcome back. Here's a look at the uh, three top films at this week's box office. On a Monday. What's a Monday? Someone from the human world. At number three, the fantasy teen flick, The Mortal Instruments, City of Bones, which had a disappointing debut. It took in just 14.1 million. Analysts say the movie's poor opening may affect its sequel, set to start shooting in Toronto next month. How would you like to make 10 grand? Drug dealing? It's not drug dealing, it's smuggling. Jennifer Aniston's Where the Millers came in second with 13.5 million. The pot smuggling romp has made a total of 91.7 million. It is well on its way to pass the 100 million dollar mark. I'm Cecil Gaines. I'm the new butler. And the butler served up another box office win. The Lee Daniels directed film starring Forrest Whitaker and Oprah Winfrey made 17 million for the top spot for a second week in a row. It has raked in just over 52 million since its opening two weeks ago, and it's generating a lot of Oscar buzz. Now, the. <laughs> uh, I guess the Oscar goes to FanFest. <laughs> Let me guess where you were this weekend, Jason. Well, no, no. So this is this is a mask from your next, oh. which, which showed up seventh on the box office. <laughs> Listen, I'm upset at the audience because <laughs> because this, sir, is a majestic film. Uh, your next played uh, Midnight Madness in uh, 2011, and it sort of sat on the shelf for all of these years. Finally gets a big release, and not enough people went to see it. This is a tremendous horror film, and it and was seventh. Yeah, I've got seventh. I mean, like, we have so many much worse films, including the number one film. Um, this, is, this is a movie... Look, the first ten minutes of Your Next is exactly the kind of horror movie I hate. It is, it is the slasher, silly film. And then the title sequence happens like, oh, my God, this is going to be terrible. And then suddenly it switches. It's an incredibly well-done, really intelligent film. It's a home invasion movie, but done with a twist. And more importantly, it's incredibly female-friendly. There's some great, strong female characters in it, something that horror movies traditionally do not do. And yeah, part of what makes it so creepy is that everyone's wearing these really weird cat masks. So, Including Jason Gorber. Including me. <laughs> is it about the acting? Is it about the directing or the writing or what? Um, the guys, the guy, it's absolutely a combination of all of them. The, the acting is tremendous because, uh, again, the, the whole notion of a home invasion film is something that's been done over and over again. You have some really famous ones like Straw Dogs or I, I always point out that Home Alone, the Macaulay Culkin film, is sort of a horror movie just done for kids. Um, um, you have stuff uh, where where you have a house and people are coming in and there have to be some way of getting traps to prevent the guys from coming in. Mm -hmm. So it's a very sort of traditional story. So if you can do a twist on it, if you can do something really interesting with it, you're like, oh, this is actually so much better than I expected it to be. And as I said, it's a we're in a weird period at the end of August that people are sort of their summers are winding down, they're getting back to school, mm -hmm. so people aren't really trying out things. Remember back in February we talked about that sometimes films uh, come out that are slightly more experimental. Mama came out back then and that was a horror film that really took off also a very smart film very cool genre pick again given the fact that this film was treated pretty badly by the distribution guys once they actually purchased it it got caught up in bankruptcy and all kinds of stuff mm -hmm. this is totally a film well worth seeing so even though not a lot of people are talking about it people should definitely go see your next if they can in theater it's a lot of fun and uh, super well made i know we have other films to talk about here but i, I because <laughs> you're so excited about this one i want to ask you if critics react the same way that you do is there a chance the film could move up and, and get a lot of attention Look, I mean, if I, if I have, what we do is like, what is, what is a film critic? What do we actually do? Well, one thing that I like to think that we do is we can actually bring films to attention to people that are deserving of such. I can sit here and poo-poo any film that I want, but if I can actually show you a film that you should absolutely go, take, go out and go see, mm -hmm. then my job's done. I mean, uh, one, I know we talked about, I wasn't around, but you talked about last week, uh, In a World. A great little film by Lake Bell, which is uh, still playing in uh, limited release in theaters. A tremendous movie that, again, isn't getting quite the buzz that something like The Butler, which I think is kind of terrible, is getting. So if you have a chance, this is a really great time just before the big Oscar onslaught and after the summer blockbusters. This is a time where some really interesting films sort of sneak in. And if you're slightly more experimental and want to try something uh, different, try that. Heck, Prince Avalanche is playing at very select theaters. <laughs> David Gordon Green, there's a film nobody's talking about, but it's this nice little independent 
different film, definitely worth seeing. Uh, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost uh, collaborated for the third time on The World's End. Uh, what did you think of that? Again, here's, here's a film which is deserving of a much larger, larger audience. I really loved Hot Fuzz and Shaun of the Dead. This is the third part of their Cornetto trilogy, which refers to the ice cream cone. This sort of re um, reveals in all three films. Um, they are fantastic at doing sort of a buddy film, a very British-style film, but putting a sort of meta genre on top of it. In this case, a science fiction. You have guys on a pub crawl being very nostalgic about their youth, and then suddenly they realize that the entire town is overrun by robots. Um, but not robots because robots are slave. It's a whole nother notion. Mm -hmm. But you have these weird blue blood creatures running through the whole town. Um, again, very high concept, very droll, and some, this is the kind of thing that a lot of audiences, you can't just peg it. It's like, oh, it's the buddy cop movie with the all women in it like The Heat was. This is a slightly more high concept film and it's required a little bit more investment. Especially in the States, they don't always get British comedy quite the way we do here in Canada. Um, the Edgar Wright films have traditionally done very well in this country, mm -hmm. and I definitely think it's deserving of an audience. Okay, I've got to remind people that uh, they can follow you on Twitter at uh, filmfest underscore CA. Jason from uh, twitchfilm.com. Thanks, thanks so for much, coming bro. in with the mask, and thanks for joining us. I'm, I'm here to make you laugh, my brother. <laughs>